Hello, my name is uh, Tom van der Poel, um, and I'm going to talk about the proagulant response in COVID-19. And let me start by saying I do not have any conflicts of interest. COVID-19 is associated with a relatively high incidence of venous thromboembolism. And this slide provides an overview of a re recent meta-analysis um, showing that the overall incidence of venous thromboembolism is approximately 25% in patients with COVID-19. In particular, pulmonary embolism is prevalent in COVID-19 and uh, slightly less so deep venous thrombosis. And the extent to which um, venous thromboembolism occurs in patients with COVID-19 is dependent on the severity of disease. So more severe patients have a higher incidence of venous thromboembolism than those with less severe disease. COVID-19 is also associated with activation of the calculation system. And this slide illustrates that by two um, parameters, D-dimer and thrombin antithrombin complexes, showing in patients with COVID-19, all of them have elevated levels and levels are even more elevated in patients in red, which were admitted, admitted to the ICU versus patients that were admitted to general wards. There's also an association between the extent of calculation activation in COVID-19 and outcome. So in this slide, you see survivors in blue and non-survivors in red, and you see platelet counts, fibrinogen levels, and D-dimers, where platelet counts and fibrinogen levels are lower in the non-survivors, indicating more extensive calculation activation, and D-dimer levels are higher in non-survivors, also indicating calculation activation to a larger extent. If you look at local tissue level in the lungs, uh, which is obviously the primary affected organ in COVID-19, um, there's extensive evidence of coagulopathy, and in particular thrombus formation, in small and larger vessels uh, in fatal cases. So this is a thrombus, for example, in here and here, uh, and this is all um, on autopsy specimens, you can see those thrombi. There's a relationship between the extent of calculation activation and the risk on thrombotic events, which is shown on the left side of this slide. Um, so this is odds ratios, and a high D-dimer level is associated with an enhanced risk for thrombosis in COVID-19. And on the other hand, enhanced or elevated D-dimer levels are also associated with an increased risk for bleeding events in COVID-19. The mechanisms of calculation activation have been the topic of several studies, and these slides represent an overview of potential mechanisms that can contribute to calculation activation in COVID-19. On the right-hand side, you see the calculation system, which eventually accumulates in the formation of thrombi. A very important mediator, and important for the remainder of this talk, is tissue factor, um, which is the primary initiator of calculation um, in COVID-19. Tissue factor is not normally exposed on resting cells, but becomes exposed upon activation of different cell types, including monocytes, neutrophils, and endothelial cells, upon stimulation by inflammatory stimuli. And in COVID-19, it has been established that, in particular, pro-inflammatory cytokines can contribute to calculation activation, and also the complement system. And this um, next couple of slides provides evidence for this. So this is a study uh, looking at tissue factor expression on neutrophils on the left-hand side of this slide. And clearly patients with COVID-19 show enhanced tissue factor expression on neutrophils. There's also evidence of enhanced calculation or complement activation in these patients with COVID-19. And on the right-hand side, what's very interesting, if you incubate healthy neutrophils with serum from patients obtained from COVID-19, there becomes enhanced tissue factor expression on neutrophils um, by the action of serum of COVID-19 patients. And if you then also incubate this serum with a complement inhibitor, CP40, there's reduced expression of tissue factor on these neutrophils, indicating that the complement system contributes to tissue factor expression. There's also, and this is in this slide, enhanced tissue factor expression on monocytes in patients with COVID-19, as is illustrated on the left-hand side of this slide. If you then look at the interaction between monocytes and platelets, it becomes clear 
that there's complex formation between platelets and monocytes in patients with COVID-19. And this is in the middle panel of this slide. And what you see here is that CD14 positive cells are monocytes. And if they're also CD41 positive, this means that these monocytes have bound platelets. Now, what is interesting is that in particular, the monocytes that are in complex with platelets show enhanced tissue factor expression. And this is shown on the right hand side of this slide. So the CD14 positive cells that are also CD41 positive show the highest tissue factor expression relative to the CD14 positive cells that are not CD41 positive. So these are not complexed with platelets. So apparently platelets enhance tissue factor expression by monocytes. There's platelet activation in patients with COVID-19 to begin with, and this is illustrated in this slide. This is coming from the Amsterdam University Medical Center, a study done by Valentin Leopold, um, showing that COVID-19 patients on the left-hand side have enhanced platelet P-selectin expression. Um, these platelets form complexes now with neutrophils. Um, in red, the COVID-19 patients versus yellowish, uh, the controls. And these patients, these neutrophils that have formed complexes show enhanced neutrophil activation as measured by CD11B expression, which you can show here on the, on the right-hand side. So patients, uh, neutrophils that are complexed with platelets show more extensive CD11B expression than neutrophils that are not complexed with platelets. So platelets not only enhance tissue factor expression by monocytes, but they also increase neutrophil activation. Platelet aggregation is also increased in patients with COVID-19. And this is shown on this slide from a study in MANA recently published in Blood. Um, um, he used different agonists, as you can see here, including thrombin and collagen. And patients with COVID-19 um, in the purplish um, bars show enhanced platelet aggregation uh, relative to controls. So there's extensive activation of platelets and this platelet activation contributes to coagulation activation at least in part by enhancing tissue factor expression. In the Amsterdam UMC, we also did a study to look at the local procoagulant response within the airways of patients with COVID-19 that were on the mechanical ventilator for at least seven days. So these patients had persistent ARDS due to COVID-19. Um, and we did sequential sampling of bronchoalveolar lavage fluid and plasma in these patients starting um, from approximately day seven after ICU admission. And this study, the primary investigator of the study was the pul pulmonary care physician, Esther Nocent, uh, working in, in my institution. So on the next couple of slides, you will see um, parameters of calculation and later on also inflammation, uh, both in BAL fluids, both, and in plasma. And in red, you see the controls. These are healthy controls and in blue, the COVID patients. Um, and you might appreciate this is calculation activation that uh, D-dimer and thrombin antithrombin complexes, the left two panels, there's in particular activation of calculation within the airways of patients with COVID-19. There's also soluble tissue factor largely elevated in BAL fluid of patients with COVID-19, whereas the contact system, kelly Klein C1 inhibitor concentrations on the right-hand side is not elevated in patients with COVID-19 with persistent ARDS. We also had follow-up samples of those patients. So this is again BAL fluid um, uh, obtained um, after week one, two on the ICU versus week three, four on the ICU. These are paired samples. And what comes from this slide is that calculation activation within the airways of patients with uh, COVID-19 is pretty consistent over time as measured by D-dimer and thrombin anti-thrombin complexes. This is uh, the same setup, same patients. On the left-hand side, tissue, uh, tissue type plus managing activator and PI-1, this fibrinolytic system. And on the right-hand side, platelet uh, release products, soluble CD14 ligand and soluble P-selectin. And all of these mediators are in particularly elevated in the BL fluid of patients. So there's local activation of fibrinolysis and platelets in the airways of patients with persistent ARDS due to COVID-19. This is complement activation, the same story um, there's massive complement activation in the airways of patients with COVID-19 as measured by CDBC and, uh, and C4BC, whereas mannose binding lectin is not elevated. So there's no evidence of the mannose binding lectin pathway 
uh, activation in these patients, but there is complement activation. And then finally, pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF, IL-1 alpha, beta, and IL-1 RA are also elevated in particularly in the airways of patients with persistent ARDS due to COVID-19. So in a summary slide, what I've told you is that there's massive activation of the coagulation system in COVID-19, and this is likely contributing to thrombosis and to the high incidence of venous thromboembolism in patients with COVID-19. I've spoken about tissue factor as a key mediator of coagulation activation in patients with COVID-19, expressed in particular by monocytes, but also by neutrophils, and not spoken about also by endothelial cells. The tissue factor expression is enhanced by platelets, which are activated to begin with in patients with COVID-19. And there's also um, abundant evidence of complement activation also within the airways, if, as I've shown you in the study done in Amsterdam UMC. And then um, finally, neutrophils are also contributing to the inflammatory environment that contributes to coagulation activation um, uh, during COVID-19. And eventually this re then results in a fibrin clot um, and in thrombus formation and in the venous thromboembolism that we see in patients with COVID-19. So in conclusion, I've told you that COVID-19 is associated with a high incidence of venous thromboembolism, approximately 25% of cases, that thromboinflammation contributes to this occurrence of venous thromboembolism in COVID-19. Uh, severe COVID-19 is associated with a strong procoagulant response, in particularly in the airway, so locally at the primary site of infection, uh, together with local activation of other uh, pro-inflammatory systems, including the complement system and pro-inflammatory cytokines. And finally, tissue factor likely is the driving factor behind enhanced coagulation activation in COVID-19. And this enhanced tissue factor expression is mediated by an interplay between various inflammatory pathways, including leukocyte, platelets, cytokines, and the complement system. I thank you very much for your attention.